All right, in this video, I wanna talk about your texture set settings and your material settings inside of Substance 3D Painter here. Okay, so let's say we've got our ball man. Let's say we wanna add some denim on top of this character. We are going to tile this up just a little bit and go ahead and just change the color, make it more like a traditional blue denim. There we go. Now, let's say I wanted to make it seem like there was a uh, tear or a hole punctured out of this. So we've got a torn cut piece of denim uh, which works really great for that. So for that, I'm just gonna drag and drop it onto our character. You'll see it added here. I'll go into the 2D view. We gotta rotate it around. Just go ahead and scale it down, put it in place. And make sure to turn off tiling. Okay, great. Cool. So now we've got this uh, little tear in there and it's just a little ripped up uh, piece of denim there on the side. Okay, but when I go to look at it, it looks like like that's not exactly what we're looking for, right? We want it to be transparent through there because it's a rip out of the jeans. One of the things about Substance Painter is that it comes in by default as an ASM, an Adobe Standard Material. Now the Adobe Standard Material comes with five basic parameters. There's your color, your metallic, your roughness, your normals, and your height map. You do have the options of adding other parameters and I'll show you how. Um, so you just want to like normally you're in this layers tab by default to the right of that is your texture set settings So let's just hop in here and I'll kind of go through um, What we're kind of looking at here So inside your texture set settings list the main things that you're going to be interacting with are your size This one's really cool. So at any point while you're working on your project you can down res uh, Your image or your your materials continue working on it and then at any point that you want jump it back up to 2K, 4K, 1K, whatever resolution you're going for. It's really nice if you're working on a slower machine to be able to downgrade them at times. And this is a per texture set. So you can, you know, tone down all the other ones and only keep your, the texture set that you're currently working on at the highest setting. That's, that's, that's a neat little, uh, neat little trick there. Now, going back to the channels idea, uh, you have the channels section here. And again, normals, uh, you know, but high roughness, metallic, and base color. If you'd like to add another one, you simply click this plus and you've got a whole bunch of these down here. So scattering color, uh, if you're doing any sort of subsurface stuff, translucency, specular coat, coat, um, all this good stuff. But opacity isn't on here. Opacity is actually unsupported by this shader. Now I can certainly add it. Uh, it just won't be fully supported by this shader type. Um, in order to get it to be supported, uh, you're gonna need to change your base material that is being processed inside a Substance Painter. And the way that you do that is you go to the second button down here on the right, and these are your shader settings. So I'm gonna click this, it's gonna open up this dialog box. So you could see up at the top, there is a ASM metal rough. So that's that's the basic Adobe standard material metal roughness uh, shader type. Now I can open this and you can see we've got some different, uh, different ones. Now, the main two that I end up using, or three really, is if for whatever reason I don't, um, I just want to go back to a PBR, a physically based rendering, a metal roughness map, I do that. But really the main one that I, I would switch to is this one down here. It's the same, it's that PBR metal roughness with alpha blending. Now, well, as soon as I click on this, um, it'll update my shader. And when I go back into these texture set settings, I can now add an opacity channel. What does that do in my in my view over here? So if I scroll down, now you can see that there is a new layer added, this opacity, and it kind of happened to me, you may have noticed it, but it may have happened quickly. But basically now that I have that, now that now there is opacity in here and I can see through that. And now I can even take a new layer, um, isolate just the opacity, say I don't want any opacity, and now I can start painting transparency on this as far as I want to. Um, so a little, little option for you there. Um, one other thing about that is once you, uh, just a couple other things about your, uh, like this, uh, this window is that you have the ability to change out, um, the type of file that's the type of map that's being written to it, if you would like. Uh, and then also I wanted to point this out too. You can scroll down here. When we talk about baking out your mesh maps, all of your mesh maps are listed down here. So if you need to sw switch them out, change them out for whatever reason, they're all down here. Additionally, I wanted to point out that in your uh, shader settings here, 
This is where you would adjust things like displacement um, and the tessellation amount if you're, if you're doing any height displacement on things, as well as any sort of emissive qualities or AO intensity. That's like, this is kind of where you would update all of that stuff there. So in case you ever need that, um, it's located in that area. But again, the biggest thing I use this for is, is just if I need to add in some uh, opacity on something and create, create a nice little opacity map there. Um, if you'd like to find out more about the different material settings, I would recommend going into the help menu and just uh, clicking on the documentation. And that will, um, uh, that will allow you to take a look at some of the additional uh, material types and, and kind of all the details on those.